Whenever I start working with a new application, one of the things I like to do before I do anything else is look at my user preferences. I want to make sure the environment is set up in a way that works the best for me. Smoke has a number of options for customizing the environment, and I want to look at some of those now. The first thing I want to do is look at user preferences. You can always access those from this Autodesk Smoke menu for preferences, or the shortcut is Command Comma. Let's open those preferences. I want to look at a few of these tabs and examine some of the most basic preferences that you should always take a look at. As you can imagine, there are a lot more than we'll take a look at in this one video, but let's get you started. I'm going to first click on this tab that says General. There are two really important options I want to point out here. The first thing I want to talk about is Auto Save. One of the things I love about Smoke is that as I'm working, my project is continually saved for me. These preferences will determine how often that is happening. The reason you might change these preferences is because of the issues at both ends of the spectrum. First of all, if you're concerned about losing work, you might want to make sure your work is being saved often enough. But on the other side of things, every time those autosaves happen, there is a slight pause in your workflow. So if you find it happening too often, you might want to back it off a little bit. You can set that for yourself. There are two types of save in this autosave. The first is the soft save. What this means is that once every three minutes by default, you'll see an orange pause icon come up. It's saving the project. But because it's a soft save, what that means is you can actually cancel that save by just moving your mouse or making any other action in the application. A hard save is a little bit different. When a hard save is started, you cannot stop it. At that point, the project will be saved. So what you're basically determining here is how often you are willing for your workflow to be stopped. Again, you're making a decision that balances how often you're willing to pause versus how often you want to make sure your work gets saved. The other option I want to point out on this window is the undo buffer. I'm pretty sure that the undo command is the most powerful command in every application we ever use. In Smoke, you can choose how many operations are saved for you to undo backward. Like any application that lets you change your undo buffer, if I raise that buffer, I am raising the amount of memory that Smoke needs to operate. So again, you want to balance this decision between how much undo history I'd like to have and how much system memory I need to operate it. You can change this value by clicking and dragging to raise the number. You can also click here to bring up a calculator and type a number. I typically leave my undo buffer set to 25. I found that to be enough to do what I need to do, but not so much that I'm slowing down my system. Let's also look at the user interface tab. There are two really important options here as well. The first is our tool tips. You'll notice that when I hover my mouse over something, I often get a little display telling me what that is. Now for the sake of this course, I'm going to turn my tool tips off so they aren't distracting to you while you're using these videos. However, you can leave yours on as a way of helping you learn the system. I'm going to turn my tool tips off. The other thing I want to take a look at here is the settings for system color. Everyone has their own preferences of what looks the best to them while they're working. You should absolutely set these to whatever looks the best to your eyes. You're the one that's going to be looking at the screen while you're working. You can change the background color, which will change the color behind your working screens. You can raise the brightness of the overall interface. You can also adjust the contrast. As you're working, just start figuring out how that interface looks to you and come back here to make changes as you see fit. I'm going to actually take my brightness back down a little bit. And I'm going to click close to close these preferences. Now that I've modified my user preferences, the interface is going to be set up to my specifications. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at keyboard shortcuts.